Hey, I'm here today working with a Yildiz 20 gauge over and under shotgun. And uh, in an earlier video, I uh, added some weight to the stock. Actually, it's the very first thing I did before I even shot the gun. Added about a pound of weight in the stock because I knew I'd want that. And uh, I, I wanted to add more. And so today's the day uh, that I'm going to do that. I'll, I'll share with you what I'm doing. Now, in the past video, um, I showed using a stainless steel bar here. It's filled with lead. It weighs about a pound. And it's got a uh, silicone cork in the front here. And it's designed to go in there and, and not contact the metal to metal of the bolt that's uh, down inside there. And so, uh, and it has this uh, brass retainer that goes across the, the back to lock it securely to the uh, stock. But what I'm doing today, um, I've got this uh, tungsten rod here that weighs about twice as much. You can see uh, this bar weighs about a pound, and this one weighs about two pounds. It's a noticeable uh, difference, you can tell. Uh, and so on this bar, I've already uh, added a buffer here. Of, this is Shugu. I'm using it as a um, like a polymer buffer, so I don't have a metal-on-metal metal contact with the bolt head. So we, when you slide it in, you can hear it just softly thunks. But I do need to trim it. It's a little tall because I still want to use this uh, brass retainer that goes across, recessed down in there. So I'm going to cut that. And uh, this is very tough. Uh, this tungsten's tough to cut. Uh, I've already marked right here where I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to try to cut it on my um, abrasive chop saw. And I'm hoping that'll work because I don't know uh, what else I could cut this with. I've got the tungsten rod clamped in where I want to cut it. Just going to put on some safety gear here. So I was trying to cut this uh, three quarter inch diameter tungsten bar on a chop saw, a abrasive wheel chop saw. And you can see after several minutes, it uh, basically just left a little gouge. Uh, I don't think that's going to work. It took, uh, would take several wheels and I'm not even sure the, uh, the saw was capable of it. So I called my friend Don and he suggested that I use a diamond cutting wheel. And then he mentioned that if I had a wet saw for cutting tile, that that would be, the blade on that would be the thing to use. And to just go slow and not let it heat up. And so that's what I'm gonna try next. So I dug up the old wet saw here. I've got some water in there. This is the tungsten bar. There's the groove that I started uh, after a few minutes with a abrasive wheel chop saw. It's got the diamond uh, cutting blade in there. And again, my friend Don advised me to go slow. So that's what I'm gonna do. Got some. Okay, so I've come to the realization that I don't really uh, have anything at my disposal to uh, quickly cut a bar of uh, tungsten like this. It's very tough. Tried the diamond wet saw and it, it cut it for a little bit, but I think the diamonds went away. And I tried the abrasive chop off wheel and it um, basically just made the wheel smaller and put a little mark on this. This is very tough metal. And uh, I guess that's why, you know, it's so dense and uh, the molecules are so tight, really hard to cut. I don't know how they're cutting it, uh, but I don't know. I might have a, I have an acetylene torch, but I, I wouldn't want to cut it without it. it would leave a really jagged uh, finish. So luckily for me, I can use it on this length, but I just can't use the brass piece. So I've come up with a workaround solution. I'll show you what I'm going to do. And so I've learned, uh, and luckily I've ordered the, uh, this uh, tungsten bar just slightly longer. It came in a, this is an eight inch length, and I needed just a little bit off of there. But I can use it in this length, this longer length. But um, it will clear the, the butt pad. Just It's pretty much flush right now. But I can't use this brass piece that I fashioned to go down in there. But I figured I could use this little piece of... Uh, sheet metal. This is uh, some sheet metal for from this uh, corrugated hanger strap and I think that'll work fine. 
I've sort of uh, been wor working on it, uh, whittling it around with the, these uh, snips here to uh, taking the edges off and making it fit. So I, I think I can uh, fashion that to put it fit in there like that. And the sheet metal, when I put those screws in, this will pull down around it. And I think I'm also going to put a, a little piece of leather or something right there. Or maybe some more of the shoe goo just to uh, not have the metal on metal connection. But what I need to do, uh, these are the screws I'm using. And that screw will work in there just fine, but uh, on this one, the screw is too small. So I'm going to open it up here with this hand punch. And I need to open it up more to one side or the other. And the hand punch has a little dimple. So you, it can help you uh, guide in the hole there. So there you go, I punched it out and it's off to the soft centered a little more like what I wanted. And the screw fits in there just fine. And the screw will flare the hole and I think that'll just work out just great for what I'm trying to do. So now the next step, I'm gonna um, get a little piece of leather and put on there. So I got a little piece of leather I'm gonna cut and uh, just to avoid the metal on metal. And I'm also gonna put some shoe goo on there too. Let's see. Put that a little bit. And I believe I'll try to put a strip of uh, leather down uh, down the side, keep it from moving around if I can get that to work. Put the, the leather in there and then slide that in. Actually, it could be more. Let's see. Don't want to glue it in because uh might have to take it out sometime to work on the gun if, it, if I ever needed to get the stock off. Like in that. And then I can, uh, actually I'll put it in this way. And use the same piece of leather to wrap around it. I can just take that, wrap it around, and uh, I'll add my screws to it next. I'll put a little shoe goo on it also. Oh, I forgot these are flatheads. I got to go get a different screwdriver. So tip, tech tip of the day, if you're using flathead screws, helps have a flathead screwdriver.
So this is gonna add uh, two pounds to this gun. The other bar I had, uh, the lead-filled stainless steel tube was about one pound and this uh, tungsten rod is about two pounds. And so I know now uh, when I'm gonna be adding weight to the shotgun and using the tungsten bar, I'm gonna need to order them at the correct length or shorter because I really don't have a good way of cutting it. It's incredibly tough metal. So I'm counting on this uh, band here to kind of stretch around and pull down onto that rod and, and keep it tight in there. I can see it's bending and flexing going in there. I think that'll be just fine. The, um, the butt plate has some recess, so there is some room in there, but I think I want to keep that because it looks like it's uh, made to compress in to the space for recoil absorption. Got it in there now, so I can put the recoil pad on. Switch back to the Phillips. Sure glad they didn't use a slotted screw on this. It would have made it a little difficult. Torx would have been nice. But it'll be nice to wrap this shotgun up and um, take it out again. Adding all this weight in the back, it's really going to help with the recoil. It already was kind of mild being a 20 gauge. But I think if you're going to shoot a shotgun a lot, like go out for a day of sporting clays, you know, you want a heavy gun. And unfortunately, those guns are very expensive. And... Hopefully I can just add weight to this and approximate the same performance. It may not last as long, but um, I can just pull the weight out and put it in another. Because basically the, the weight of this, the weight I added to the shotgun was about a, almost $100 just for that bar. And the shotgun itself was only, you know, $479. So it's... Uh, like one sixth of the cost of the gun I've got just in the weight here, which, uh, you know, I don't mind doing it if, it if it improves the gun. It feels a lot heavier, two pounds heavier. Um, I'll let you know how that works out. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. So I got lucky. I got the weight installed in this yieldage shotgun. It's a tungsten rod that's uh, three quarters of an inch diameter and uh, eight inches long and it weighs a little under two pounds. And luckily the eight inch length was workable in my situation. If it had been any longer, uh, I, I think I'd be looking around still for a way to cut it, the bar. I tried an abrasive cutoff wheel. I was trying to get it down to seven and three quarters of an inch. I tried a 12 inch diameter chop off uh, wheel, an abrasive cutting wheel. And that just put a little gouge in, in the tungsten bar and after a few minutes, it just significantly shortened the diameter of my cutting wheel. So I had to stop. And then I tried uh, a uh, diamond cutting wheel. My friend Don, I called him up to ask him how to cut tungsten. And he's like, he told me about uh, using a diamond cutting wheel from like a tile saw. I had one, so I tried that. And that showed good promise initially, but soon after the, the wheel touched into the tungsten, it cut good at, at first, more aggressively than the abrasive wheel, but then it seemed like the diamonds left the building when they met the tungsten. And probably maybe that, uh, maybe that uh, blade was not really designed to cut tungsten, to cut tile great, but it probably won't even cut tile now. Even though I had a, was keeping a very light touch and going really slow, as uh, was recommended, 
And I had water running too to cool it and keep the dust down. Um, all that still didn't play in my favor. Uh, it cut butter, but not for long. And so uh, I went to uh, plan B, which is figuring out a way to use that length as possible. And so I used a sheet metal bracket that uh, worked great in my situation. But more importantly, the thing I re I've learned is that if I, um, I'm definitely planning to use tungsten in the future because it's a very dense metal and you can get more weight in there for the size. But definitely gonna remember to order it the size that I need or slightly smaller so I can pad it up because I just have no way in my uh, repertoire of cutting tools to cut uh, a tungsten bar. I'm gonna ask a friend of mine that has a water jet. Um, maybe he can cut it with that sometime. But from now on, I'm just gonna try to order the tungsten uh, and the size I need because that's some pretty tough metal and I don't want to have to try to cut it again. And so um, hope you enjoyed the video and good luck with your projects. Thanks for watching.